Hundreds of thousands of protesters took to the streets in Israel after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fired his defense minister, Yov Gallant. Now, why did he end up firing him? Well, because Gallant had some thoughts about his judicial overhaul, which posed a threat to national security. Now, protesters gathered outside of Netanyahu's home in Jerusalem, and protesters set large fires on Tel Aviv's main highway. Uh, there you see his now former defense minister who spoke out. Well, he didn't even speak out against what Netanyahu wants to do with uh, weakening the Supreme Court in Israel. He just simply said, listen, there are mass protests. There are reservists for the uh, Israeli defense forces who are not happy about this. And in protest, they are refusing to serve. That is posing a threat to national security. So Netanyahu, maybe you should pause on this weakening of the Supreme Court. Netanyahu didn't like that and fired him. But the update to the story is now Netanyahu has agreed to put a hold on the judicial overhaul, arguing that if he didn't do so, it would lead to civil war within Israel. Now, we do have some more details on this story. Let's take a look at the next video. Netanyahu removing Yoav Gallant, a member of his own Likud party, after Gallant called for a pause in the government's controversial plan to weaken Israel's judiciary, essentially stripping its power to have final say on Israel's laws. The plan triggering weeks of massive protests, an estimated 300,000 citizens marching Saturday, many alleging the plan is a power grab that could make Israel an autocracy more like Turkey or Russia. We all have to fight for our rights because of the plans of Benjamin Netanyahu that want to turn this nation into a dictatorship. The unprecedented anger spreading to Israel's military with hundreds of reservists refusing to report for duty. So again, those reservists refusing to report to duty or for duty is what eventually I think persuaded Netanyahu to put a pause on this and definitely persuaded his now former defense minister to speak out against the judicial overhaul. Now Israel's parliament was poised to vote this week on the first pillar of the overhaul, which would give the coalition a majority on the committee that appoints judges, although some appointments would still require compromise. Other parts of the overhaul aim to limit the Supreme Court's jurisdiction and allow a simple majority of lawmakers to override the court's decisions. And lawmakers on Monday passed the bill out of committee as scheduled in preparation for a final round of voting. But again, let me just reiterate, Netanyahu has agreed to put this judicial overhaul on pause. Cenk. Okay, I wanna congratulate the Israeli citizens, cuz that's how you do protests, that's how you fight back. So part, great part of Jewish culture is questioning authority. It's taught all the way back in uh, you know, basically school when you go to temple. Uh, and it's part of the, not just the social culture, but the religious culture as well. And so here it is where they say, no, no, we're gonna fight back against authority. And uh, they did what a lot of countries couldn't do. Uh, so I, I originally from Turkey. Uh, Erdogan did something very similar in Turkey that Netanyahu is doing here. And the right wingers of all the religions, all the backgrounds, Trump, Erdogan, Putin, uh, Netanyahu, they all do the same thing because what unites them is not religion. What unites them is their right wingers who want authoritarian power. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in Turkey, they lost that fight. And Erdogan was able to restructure the constitution and then stayed around uh, for at least a decade more. Right, so thank you for winning on behalf of Israel and on behalf of, uh, at least for now. Okay, and we got a huge caveat on that coming in a second, and on behalf of the whole world. Um, but the caveat uh, is that Netanyahu says no, we're going to go back to this discussion at the end of April, and he had to promise even more uh, extreme right wing zealots in his own very extreme right wing government that don't worry, we're going to come back and try to end the. Uh, judicial independence in Israel and make and by the way one of the reasons people are fighting so hard is not just because of corruption but Israel has a good reputation for fighting corruption uh, much better than America does uh, but also because if they are able to reduce the power of this of the judiciary in Israel the religious right will be able to imp start imposing religious laws on secular Jews in Israel and they don't want that rightfully so and that's part of why they're fighting back but I'll add a second asterisk here wouldn't it be amazing if there was the same kind of protests to free the Palestinians? 
that would show an amazing uh, action on behalf of humane and moral citizens that I have a lot less hope for because but now we know it's apparently possible right when the secular and left wing and reasonable and rational Israelis stand up they could do amazing things. I wish they would do it on the other issue as well, but this was an excellent fight, but they gotta keep it going because they're gonna be back. You know, and you have labor unions that played a huge role in this as well, calling for a general strike. So, for instance, Israel's largest labor union called for this general strike. As part of the general strike, banks, government offices, utility companies, and some schools will also close their doors, said a spokesperson for Histadrut, Israel's largest trade union. It would be the first such strike in the country for over a decade. I have no doubt that that played a role as well in Netanyahu's decision here. And just to give you the exact statements coming from the now former defense minister. So Gallant said on Saturday that the overhaul had sparked division within the military that was becoming a national security threat as scores of reservists have said that they won't serve in the military if the overhaul passes. He said the rift was causing a clear, immediate and tangible threat to the security of the country. For that message, he got fired, but eventually Netanyahu conceded and decided to, at least for now, put a pause on his efforts to overhaul the Supreme Court. But I don't put it past him to immediately go back to this as soon as things die down a little bit. Well, he's going to, he said he's gonna come back to it at the end of April and he made a promise to the right wingers in his government. So you can't let up at all. I mean, it, it, it's not to say that you should have the same level of protest the next day, right? But when they come back for it, I mean, I hope you do. I, I hope you have endless protests to make sure it never happens, right? But when it comes back, then you really gotta get up and at them again. And anyways, I'm preaching to the choir, they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, Again, that tactic of saying I'm not gonna serve in the IDF if X, a lot of Israelis could say if we continue to imprison the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and that would be amazing. We're not anywhere near that yet, but one last piece of credit. In this case, it wasn't just labor, it was also business community in Israel that said no, this turns us into a third world country or I don't know if that phrase is out of you know out of use these days but anyway this is not who Israel is we can't attract business if we don't have a decent judiciary so labor and business work together here as part of this victory mm-hmm. so great job there as well thanks for watching the young Turks we really appreciate it another way to show support is through YouTube memberships you'll get to interact with us more there's live chat emojis badges You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.